Hello, can I have everybody's attention, please? Yep. First of all, uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming here for uh, Marilyn's celebration and memorial of her life. Um, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to bless the food, and we're going to have a party. And then at the end, if anybody, if I, while we're eating and hanging out, if anybody wants to come up and tell a little story about Marilyn, this will be the place to tell a story about Marilyn. I'm going to start off right now by saying a little thing about Marilyn. So Marilyn, Marilyn if, for most of you that knew Marilyn, I guarantee everybody had some type of encounter here with Marilyn. In other words, she loved to run the roads. And she didn't mind going anywhere in the world to help anybody that she could. And I know that because I've seen her do it time and time again. And that, that is what I'm telling you is that I know that if Marilyn was here right now, she would tell each and one, ask each and every one of you where y'all want to go. Y'all want to go? Let's go right now. She'll be ready to go. So when Marilyn was ready to go, she was ready to go. And so we're going to do things a little differently tonight. We're going to, I'm going to pray for this food. We're going to hang out. We're going to love each other. We're going to pray and uh, we're going to tell stories. And if anybody wants to come up here and tell a story, it's going to be a memory. Uh, I got Eddie here. He's going to uh, record some stories for me and we're going to put it up on the webpage to, uh, to glorify Maryland tonight. So I really appreciate all of you coming out here. If we can bow our head, I'm going to pray for the food, and we're going to get ready to eat and uh, have a good time here tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for this family that's here tonight. Lord, we just ask a blessing upon all the food that has been prepared before us. Lord, we ask a blessing upon the hands that prepared it before us. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together and that we can break bread together as family. And Lord, we just ask that you would bless this time tonight, and we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's eat. Ready? Hello. Hello, hello. Um, Y'all keep eating, you know, keep eating, keep talking. Um, I'm gonna break the seal and share a story about Miss Marilyn. Um, if y'all don't know me or don't recognize me, I'm Christine Bourgeois. If you don't know that, Carmelite's daughter. If you don't know that, well, hello, nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> but um, so Miss Marilyn, she grew up. She was our neighbor. Um, we lived down the street, and uh, you know, we grew up. We didn't have uh, we had what we needed, but we didn't have um, the most money, and. Uh, growing up, Miss Marilyn was always just one of the most generous people that uh, we had a blessing of being around. So this, I wish I had a funny story, but this is just going to be a, just a nice one about our life. But um, there's a specific memory. There's a specific memory that had come up when I found out uh, she had passed. And we're going to hope I get through it. Um, y'all get y'all tissues. But... Um, there was a birthday, I had to be turning eight or nine, and there just wasn't a chance for my mom to go to the store and get anything. Um, and I, I forgot how, maybe I was walking on the street and she said hello, she knew it was my birthday, she made me feel very special, told me happy birthday, screamed it so the whole neighborhood could hear. And uh, yeah, and she said, what y'all doing? And um, she just, she wound up um, just asking my mom, be like, I'm gonna take her to the store, we're gonna pick her a cake. and. Uh, she picked me up. She brought me to the store. I got to pick a birthday cake, and we were able to cut cake and and laugh and say happy birthday. So it's nothing. It's nothing crazy. It's not you know. And I'm, I hope somebody else comes up in here and tells you know tells some good stories. But it was just a testament to the woman she was. Um, she was amazing to know. She was generous. Uh, and um, yeah, she was just um, anybody that knew her. She was just like you know. And just the hoot of the party, the hoot of the <laughs> the place. So, um, so yeah, I I loved her, and um, she's been so important to specifically my brother. Um, just like another mom, another um, just another family member. She was, she was family. So, yeah, um, I'm glad to be here to celebrate with y'all. That's all.
Attention, everybody. How y'all doing tonight? All right. Can I get everybody's attention? Nobody want to? All right. So, uh, where can I start off with Miss Marilyn Agoff? She was the most sweetest woman, and she was like a grandmother to me. Took me, took me all over the place, you know. And uh, I want to get off. I want to tell you all about this one story about she cooked this alligator that we caught when I was about nine years old. So me, my brother, and my little friend, Helma boy, he, his, name, his name is Darren Helma. We caught an alligator, and uh, we decided that, uh, you know, to bring it over to Miss Marilyn Agoff's house. And so, uh, after, you know, we, uh, we caught the alligator, we bring it over there, and she says, I'm going to cook this thing up for you guys. So, what happened was uh, she took the alligator that was in the ice chest and just started beating it with a shovel over and over again. And it was the, it was the most funniest thing ever, you know, because uh, this woman, like, she, she loves to cook and stuff. Well, anyway... So furthermore, what I want to say is, Miss Lujin's husband, Colin Coulon, is the one that finished it off, and he killed it. He, he finished it off, and he killed the alligator, but I just want to say it was one really good alligator. <laughs> but that's all I got for you guys. Thank you. I can't. I, I got stage fright so bad. I got stage fright so bad. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes. Hi. I'm Cora. If you don't already know, I am uh, one of uh, Miss Marilyn Agoff's two wonderful grandchildren. It's me and John Charles there. She made some really beautiful grandchild, if I do say so myself. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, um, what, what can I say? Uh, she was a woman who loved to cook and loved to drive. She uh, taught me a lot of things I know today about cooking. Um, not so much about driving. <laughs> um, thankfully, I didn't take on her road rage skills. <laughs> but oh, she took me all over the country. You know, if we weren't driving to go see Uncle Peeny, we were driving to uh, Biloxi to go to the Hollywood Casino. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we went to Florida. Uh, I believe she even took me to Myrtle Beach one time. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget all of the great road trips we took together. Um, all of the sketchy motels that we stayed at because she wanted to save as much money as possible. <laughs> um, I'm honestly surprised we never brought home any bed bugs. <laughs> and we only found one motel that paid by the hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, one great story that I have from my mom that she wanted me to share about Marilyn today, uh, since she couldn't make it with me, is while she was still pregnant with me, she went over with my dad to Mama and Papa's house, uh, and she walks in, and Mama's cooking something in the kitchen like usual, and it smells awesome. And my mom's like, ooh, Shad, that smells so good. What are you cooking up in here? And my, and my mom's like, roadkill, baby. I hit a rabbit on the way home. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, exactly uh, the kind of stuff my mom would always do. And uh, we're going to miss having that kind of light in our life. All righty, I'm going to catch y'all attention right here because I feel a little more confident. I was a little nervous at first, but uh, all right, I'm going to let y'all know something about Miss Marilyn, all right? Here we go. One thing in particular I want to say, I remember it was, you know, she took me in by her house, you know, because, you know, I wasn't like on my own yet or whatever, and, you know, I was bouncing from place to place, and she like took me in, well... One particular night when I was living by the house by, you know, her and Terrio, the other son, Terrio, she wanted to go to the casino. And uh, Terrio didn't want to go. So 
Terrio, would, would, you know, he was like, you know, well, I don't feel like going, Ma, whatever. And so she goes, Christopher, you want to go? And I'm like, sure, why not? You know what I mean? You take me all over the place anyway. Well, to top this off, this was so funny. So she goes, Terrio, you never want to go with me, you know, anywhere. And uh, well, anyway, so uh, furthermore, I just want to say that we wind up going to the casino. And uh, after, we, after we go to the casino, we wind up going play bingo in the middle of nowhere. And I, I just wanted to go home. And uh, the last game that we went was at the bingo hall in Mississippi after this you know, trip that she took me on. We hit the blackout, and she yelled, bingo, the loudest loudest bingo I've ever heard in my life and I'm like gee whiz and it was it was amazing so that's all I want to say again yeah, yeah I did okay Christopher started off with the alligator story they caught the alligator they sent Marilyn by my house she comes by my house with the alligator in her car in an ice chest, which it could have got out the ice chest, and she asked Colin to help her kill it. Well, I don't know what they was using, but they was chopping on that poor alligator's head. I had to keep going inside and coming back outside and say, did y'all get his head off yet? Did y'all get his head off yet? I don't know how much they was chopping on that alligator. And then she took it home and cooked it for the kids. She must have made some either alligator sauce pecan or some alligator nuggets. But she brought it by, by calling to help her get, kill him. And they was working on that alligator, and I thought, oh, Lord, that poor alligator. I said, I'm going inside. Let me know. I go back out the door and check and say, did y'all get his head off yet? No, not yet. I'm going back inside. I'll be back later to check if y'all got his head off yet. And then... I wanted to tell her about, she was my Aunt T. I named her Aunt T after everybody in the Agar family. It was T Will, T Broad, T Tat, T This and T That. And so I said, T, you know what? I'm going to call you Aunt T. I said, everybody in the Agar family is a T, so you T. So I nicknamed her Aunt T. So whenever I talked to her, she was Aunt T. And just so happened, me and my husband went out of town to go visit his son. Well, she happened to call. Well, God put it that way. That's how mysterious God works. I got to tell Auntie I loved her before she went, and she got to tell me she loved me before she went. And then, I mean, if Mary Margaret called to let us know what was going on, and we was down this long, long hallway at the hotel. And I was carrying arms of bags of stuff. I would have never got to my cell phone. So God fixed it where we put everything down in the room. And then the cell phone rang that it was Mary Margaret to let me know that T had passed out on her porch. And so it just goes to show you that God works in mysterious ways. He got me to talk to her before we left. And he got Mary Margaret to get in touch with me after we got to the room because I was carrying so much stuff there ain't no way I would have answered that telephone I had my arms full and I probably would have said oh it's Mary I'll call her back later but probably would have forgot to call Mary back so God left that phone ring when we got to the room then they, uh, we was up in Tunica and they had a, a sidewalk sale at uh, one of the uh, mm, the hotel places has the gift shops, but since the pandemic, there's a lot of gift shops that's closed. So they had a, a sidewalk sale at one of the gift shops, and I said, well, you know what? I'm going to go see if there's possibly anything I could wear for T's celebration of life. So I said, well, I probably won't find anything. I could hear Auntie behind me saying, Lou Jane, go check on that rack. There's something that you're going to be able to wear perfectly. I went check on the rack. I found this outfit. She said, 
Go look at them shoes in that store. I'm telling you, you're going to be able to wear them shoes. I went in the store, found the shoes. She said, look, go look on that rack over there. They got, a, they got a necklace I want you to wear. I went, look on a rack. I found the necklace. So my outfit come from Marilyn walking with me through that gift shop telling me I was going to find this and that. And I found this and that with her walking with me. And I wanted to share that, too. Yep, so Auntie dressed me today. That's right. Auntie, Auntie helped me find the stuff to wear. Yep. So that's my story I wanted to share. Oh, yeah. Look, wait, which, which, uh, who's the guy that says one wild and crazy guy? That's Jim Carrey, huh? Ain't Jim Carrey the one that says... I'm one wild and crazy guy. Well, look, Aunt, Aunt, oh, Steve Martin. Okay, Steve Martin was the wild and crazy guy. Well, I, I say Auntie was the wild and crazy woman. <laughs> and she knew it, and she loved it, and I loved it with her. <laughs> yeah, she owned up to it. She was like Steve Martin. She was that wild and crazy woman, and we all loved her. So we all loved that Auntie. So that's a, that a story. So anybody next? <laughs> we had Terry Ogoff, my old classmate, brought me home one day to see his mother in his house. I wound up meeting this guy over here, Peeny. And uh, eventually Peeny moved up north when married his mother, John Charles. And uh, so me and Crazy Mama decide we're gonna go up there and go see him. So she, uh, she was more than determined. She wanted to show me everything along the way. And uh, we, we stopped off, the first stop was at, uh, like Christopher said, at a bingo hall in Alabama that you could never find in some friggin' woods somewhere. And, and, you know, uh, then we moved on to Tunica. And we went to Fitzgerald's where she had a coupon for steaks. And we had steak and lobster that night. And we wound up staying, like Cora said, at some rinky ding hotel. Where, and uh, we want, and then we're like on the border, you know, Tunica's on the border of Memphis. So then she said, oh no, you can't go through Memphis without going to Graceland, Jean. I want you to go see everything. You gotta go. I said, okay, we're going to Graceland. So we get there and she says, you know, I really feel bad. It should be you and your mama coming to see this together. She said, but I'll step in for your mama. And I, I said, you know what? You're going to be my crazy mama. And my mama's going to be my regular mama. I give her that title because one night I'm by the house and uh, her Terrio and Peenie's going at it. And she takes a butcher knife after Peenie. And I said, oh, Lord, I think I'm going to go in the room because uh, I, didn't have, I didn't have a place to stay for a while, for about six months. Uh, things went bad with the oysters. I used to fish oysters with Uncle Danny. And, uh, and my grandma had her ways about it, and we, I wanted up. Uh, Terrio said, well, come on in. And... Uh, you can come sleep the night by my house, and we'll see in the morning what goes on. And I stayed there for like about six months or so. And uh, it was more than interesting. Uh, yeah, she was, she was something else. Uh, so we get up there by a peony, and we, uh, with her reputation of how she acted in the restaurant, me and Peeny decided we was gonna tell the waitress, look, we had this moose lodge and a real nice place, and we told the waitress, we said, hey, whatever you do, serve the food as fast as possible, 
Make sure it's cooked as good as can be, and don't say much at the table. Well, the woman screwed up. She said something about 15 minutes before we left, and Marilyn went off all outdoors. She would embarrass anybody underneath the table when she get, get going. And, uh, but we, we love the dearly. And we just, uh, we just figured out ways to work around her. And uh, so we, I, I went and tipped the waitress, and she saw me. So boy, did I get bitched out. She said, she didn't give us no effing good service. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? I'm disappointed. She really was never disappointed with me. She might have said it, but she never meant it. As far as she was concerned, uh, you know, when it was me, Terrio, and Pina together, it was her three sons. And, and I'm sure she felt that way about a lot of kids that came to her house and, and was there for help and needed help. She, she was... Um, she was really great about that. So on the way back from Peenies, uh, we get ready to go through the mountains. She said, Gene, you ain't never saw mountains like this. You got to watch. You got to stay up. I said, Marilyn, you want me to go to sleep or you want me to stay up? I said, I can't drive if you don't let me sleep. Oh, no, you're going to be able to drive. You're going to be able to drive. I said, oh, okay. I'm going to show you. She kept me up. When I started swerving, she said, oh, Bev, I think we got to go and get a hotel room. I said, that's what I was trying to tell you. You can't keep me up. <laughs> I need a rest and shit. And um, so then we wound up going to uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I said, Lord, you got me in these projects around here. And, uh, but we wanted up at Caesar's Palace Casino on the river. And then uh, in the morning we got up and we, we went to, uh, Louis, uh, to the track where they had the uh, Kentucky Derby. And uh, I, I can say that uh, it was always more than interesting when we were together, uh, the whole group. Um, she really really um, had a special way about her making you know that you was loved. And uh, no matter what, she'll always be my crazy mama. And I'll always love her. And, and I, I'm sure I have more to say, but I just can't think about it just yet. Yeah. Oh, I'm next. Okay. I'm going to tell you a little story about Crazy Mom. And in my phone, if anybody wants to see it after this, in my telephone, I have her as Marilyn Crazy Mom Materio. <laughs> to make sure I got the right Marilyn. Because <laughs> when he started calling her Crazy Mom, I started calling her Crazy Mom. And for anyone here that ever rode in the car with Marilyn survived, God bless you. Y'all had angels with y'all. I rode in the vehicle with her one time. I refused to ever get in the car again, and I kept my word on that. That's why I'm standing here today. <laughs> you don't want to ride with Marilyn, because she is crazy on the highway. She has a lot of places to go and a lot of people to see. I understand. And she's, she has one speed, fast. She doesn't know any other speed. But anyway, one morning... My husband and I are sleeping about 2 o'clock in the morning, the doorbell rings. And I said, Randy, are we expecting anyone at 2 in the morning? We have to go to work the next morning. And he says, no. So I go to the door, and I looked, uh, first I went to the window, and I looked out the window, and it's Crazy Mama. And I'm like, what's Crazy Mama doing here at 2 in the morning? So when I opened the door, and I said, Marilyn, I said, what are you doing? What's wrong? Something happened? No, Shad, nothing happened. Look, I'm waking you up to let you know that they got an ambulance across the street, and I don't know what's going on over there, and I thought you might know. I said, I was sleeping. I have to work in the morning. It's 2 in the morning. My husband and I have to go to work. I said, you know, Marilyn, since you up, 
and you woke us up, why don't you go find out what happened and come back and tell me, you know, what's going on at the neighbor's house. Maybe we can do that. And she goes, yeah, Beth, that's a good idea. That's what I'm going to go do. She said, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to come back and tell you what happened. I'm like, oh, okay, Marilyn. Yeah, I was like, that's typical crazy mama Marilyn. You got to love her. And I'm going to tell you, she had a heart bigger than herself. Because one time the lights was off in Lafitte, and it was freezing. And she called me up. She says, Beb. Yeah, that was my favorite word with her, Beb. She goes, Beb, y'all got electricity over there? I said, no, Marilyn. I said, we're freezing over here, my husband and I. We told her electric. She said, well, maybe I, she said, I got lights over here. And she I said, Marilyn, I said, if you got lights and you warm, can I go to your house? And she goes, yeah, come on over, Beb. She said, I'm going to cook you and Randy some breakfast. And so anyway, Randy and I went over there, and her and Terry cooked us a hot breakfast and kept us warm. <laughs> That's the other side of Maryland, too. Not only the crazy side, she had a great big heart. And so we love her. See you, Maryland, till next time. <laughs> Okay, my story with Aunt Marilyn was that she took me to Lafouche and Lafouche on to go fishing, and we caught a lot of redfish, and she was so excited. She was like, good job, good job, and that's one of the memories I can remember with her. Oh, yep, like Ned said, Aunt Marilyn was all heart. Anybody needed anything, there wasn't anything that Marilyn wouldn't do. She'd give a shirt off her back to anybody. She always was, her and Terry, I believe they cooked and uh, served people at me and Colin's uh, wedding and our uh, wedding blessing. Uh, I believe Colin's uh, um Birthday party. She always, her and Uncle Terry was always there for us. They always cooked for us and served for us. They always helped in any way they can. And Marilyn was, like Nettla said, all heart. She was definitely all heart. So here's my Coca Cola to you, Auntie. <laughs> to Auntie. <laughs> my Coca Cola to Auntie. Hey, hello, Auntie. Yep, to Auntie. <laughs> Coca Cola to you, Auntie. <laughs> Is there any other stories? Christopher, you thought of another one? All right, y'all. Uh, recently, this is a story recently about, uh, I want to say four months ago, like around the time that uh, before I left Louisiana, uh, Madeline, she made me, I just want to say this much. She inspired me to have a better life. She brought me to Michigan, Mount Pleasant, Michigan, where this guy's from right here. What I'm talking about, right, I'm talking about he's from down here, but what I'm saying is, you know, the, the, past 20, the past 20 years he's been up here. I just really want to say, like, I want everybody to know this right now. This woman had the, the biggest, what I'm saying at the town of this room, hold on, hold on, Terry, listen. This woman had the biggest heart, I mean the biggest heart. She cooked countless meals. She, br she brought me anywhere where I wanted to go. Took me on... Any, anywhere, anywhere I wanted to go, I know. But any, all, I just want to say this much. Four months ago, right before I left, we went on a spontaneous, want to say spontaneous ride, meaning that, like, I didn't know where we was going to go. She said, you want to go for a ride? I said, yeah. This was like two nights before I left, before I moved. We sitting there riding, you know, and, you know, just riding for like an hour long, and she says, I want to go play bingo. And I'm like, oh, geez, where are we going to go play bingo at? She takes me to this VFW in Mississippi in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, Marilyn, I want to go. She's like, well, 
tough, tough, tough. This is what, this is what you're going to do or whatever. And I'm sitting there like, oh, geez, I want to go home so bad. Well, to top the notch, we wind up winning at that bingo. And she goes, thank you so much for coming with me because my son, my son wouldn't want to go with me. And as I think of that, a while back, a lot of times, Terry wanted to use her car to drive, right? And uh, she says, Terry, you, you, you use the car more than me. And I'm like, what you mean by that? And uh, Terry goes, he says, Christopher got more miles in the passenger seat than I do as a driver. Get it right. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that, Noah. This happened a long time ago, almost 46 years ago to be exact. We was on vacation and uh, I got me a birthday cake and I bit into it and then I spit it out. My mama slapped me in back the head and she said, what the hell you did that for? I said, oh my, you taste this crap. She tasted it and she's like, oh no, we bringing this shit back. See, so want to tell that little uh, cashier, said, oh, I like to uh, refund this here. Oh, sorry, ma'am. We can't refund you your money. Uh, I said to myself, oh, it's about to get good in here. She said, well, I tell you what, yeah. Effing this, that, and the other. You might as well go ahead and call the cops, my mama told her. Yep. She said, because uh, I'm going to show you my freedom of all rights. She said, uh, I'm going to sit out there, and y'all ain't going to sell a cake one today. Well, when it's all said and done, they thought they was going to crawfish Marilyn egg off. Oh, hell no. She got her money back plus a free cake. I said, nah, huh? You ain't giving who her money back? Uh-uh. Ain't happening. Not on that July 1st, 1976 day. And believe you me, I think the cops would have went in her favor, too. Because uh, another story, needless to say, it was uh, 2008, and uh, it was during the hurricane season, and uh, my mama forgot my daddy's medicine at the house, and uh, they had four cops, the youngest rank they got. One of them made the comment and said, oh, I thought they quit letting people damn pass. I'm like, oh. My God, please don't let her hear her say that, because I know what she's going to do. She's going to come unglued on this guy. Well, he never heard that. Well, she stopped by the little bridge shack, and she stopped the car, and she said, Hey, Jack, I want to let y'all know something right damn now. My husband's a World War II and Korean veteran. I forgot his goddamn medicine, and I'm going to get them up, she said. Who turns around? No other than new Norman himself, the sheriff of Jefferson Parish. And he salutes Marilyn and up and she said, yes, ma'am. You go get your husband's Madison, Jack. I look in the back seat, and they got three young fellas there, and they was mouths drop and speechless. I'm like, you see? You see that, huh? I said, when you want something done, I said, you don't go around and beating around the bushes with the peasants and the peons. I said, my mama went top of the mountain. She never asked. She told Moses what she was going to do. Moses turned around and saluted her and said, yes, ma'am. I said, uh, I looked in the back of him. I said, now the last time I checked, I said, they ain't got but one higher than Moses in the Bible, Jack. And that's the good Lord himself. And they were speechless. I wasn't speechless. I knew. They was in for a surprise. Hey. Oh, here's Gene. I got something to say. Hey, Terry O. I owe you a donut. Yeah, from class. Yeah, they walked in the classroom with a whole dozen of donuts, and uh, I grabbed three. 
the teacher said, well, Gene, you're kind of greedy today. I said, you see who's behind me? Terrio. I got to get mine first. <laughs> You know, my Uncle Danny's over there. He never came up yet. He's got an interesting story, but not too interesting. He, he helped out one time when she was in trouble. She was working at a time saver. How about I get my, you want to get my John to come hold? John, can you come hold this mic for me? Uh, my grandmother was a very interesting person, to say the least. Um, if there was anything she liked to do as much as driving and cooking, it was definitely fishing or taking people fishing. And I remember when I was a little boy, I um, first time I can remember she took me fishing. My family always goes camping up in Michigan every year. And we were down by the lake by our campsite. And she was teaching me how to fish. She grabbed the worms with her bare hands, and I was all grossed out. I was freaking out. I thought that was disgusting. And we, I cast my line, and I, kept, I, I, I hooked something. I was like, Mama, I got a fish. I got a fish. It was not a fish. It was a little baby turtle. And we reeled it in. And my grandmother got all excited. And I was like, Grandma, why? Are, it's a turtle. We can't keep this. And she was like, we're going to be eating good dinner tonight, John. And I was like, no, no, we cannot, no, I don't want to eat the turtle. I was crying and freaking out. And eventually she said, why don't you keep it? So we went right back up to the campsite and then we drove home. And then I kept this little turtle in a tank for about a month. And it was, and I, I just, my grandma, she, she was a wonderful person. She had a great heart. She did anything she ever wanted for me. Always took me shopping, fishing, anything I wanted to do. And uh, I hope she all touched you guys as much as she touched me in your lifetime. <laughs> well, that's a tough act to follow right there. But anyway, if I could have everybody's attention for a moment, this is, uh, this is a time that I think everybody should uh, know something special about Maryland. So I know, I know that Maryland probably brought everybody in this place somewhere, somehow, gave a ride to either cook for, took fishing, or anything. Maryland had a heart as big as this room right here. And I'm gonna tell you what, she did a lot of great things, and she did a lot of good deeds. But what I wanna tell you about is that her good deeds, her good deeds did not get her into heaven. And I'm gonna tell you, my mom's in heaven right now. And I'm gonna tell you how I know this. Because when Marilyn got sick from Hurricane Ida, her and my brother came up to Michigan. And when they came up to Michigan, they brought COVID with them. And they brought COVID to my whole family. And I've been praising God ever since that time. And I'll praise God for it right now today. Because when my mom, was in the ICU right before she was getting ready to go on a ventilator. She decided that she was going to ask Jesus Christ into her life. And I helped her do that. And I just wanted all of you to know that Marilyn accepted Jesus Christ in her life. And she is in heaven right now. And so... The only thing I got to add to that today is that in Romans, in the Bible of the book of Romans, in chapter 3, the 23rd verse, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
But in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for each and every one of you that he took the place for us on that cross to die for all of our sins because we're the ones that should have been on that cross. Not, our, not Jesus because he was innocent, but we were all sinners. He was the only perfect one. And I guarantee you, we will all see our Heavenly Father on the other side. And so from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank each and every one of you, from, for me and Terrio, and Cora and John, for y'all coming here tonight and having this celebration with us from Maryland, because this is the way she would have wanted it. She would love everybody to have a party. She would love everybody to have a good time. And she never made, she always made sure somebody had something to eat. And so I'm glad if you guys haven't eaten enough, well then shame on you because there's plenty of food out there. But before you all go, I want to say a word of closing word for prayer. If we could all bow our heads, please, at this moment, I would say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together. As a family, Lord, we thank you for the celebration of Maryland's life. God, I just ask that you would just be with each and every one of these people as we leave this room. And God, as we go forth in whatever directions we go, Lord, that you would keep your safety upon us. And Lord, that you would just be with us and guide us this day. Lord, we thank you for everyone in this room. We thank you for the celebration of Maryland's life. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the sun for us, on that cross for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, Marilyn looked at me, Peeny, and Terrio as three sons. And she couldn't be no further from wrong. She was always right about that. Um, I don't know where Terry was hiding at, but one time I came home with them and I was feeling kind of good because they smoked a little something in the car. And she said, what the hell did y'all do to my only good child? She said, y'all no good little bastards. What did y'all do to him? And uh, it was another time when me and Peeny came home by ourselves. And uh, there again, we were feeling good. And that Peeny's, Peeny's uh, heading to the room, and there's Marilyn bitching her head off. She said, how the hell? I know Gene didn't drive. I said, no, Marilyn. I said, I let Peeny drive. Peeny, that little MF don't have no driver's license. You're going to go to jail. I said, Marilyn, go to jail. He enlisted in the Army. They taught him how to salute and shoot its gun. And she said, oh, y'all better go to bed. Y'all got to sleep, whatever y'all got going on off. Well, we did. But it always was interesting. It always was fun, and she will be missed. And to finish about my Uncle Danny, he found that at the uh, gas station down the street when she was robbed, hit in the head, and took care of her until he and us got there. <laughs>